Good morning, folk. I greet and welcome you on this wonderful Ascension morning. And I pray that as we meet together, we will just be comfortable and at home with one another in these days of COVID, and we hope which will soon pass. I call you to worship by reading Psalm 92, verses 1 to 4. How good it is to give thanks to you, O Lord, to sing in your honor, O Most High God, to proclaim your constant love for every morning and your faithfulness every night. With the music of stringed instruments and with melody on the harp, your mighty deeds, O Lord, make me glad because of what you have done, I sing for joy.
Come, let us come before the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, we have come into your house to worship and praise your holy name as we listen to your word and raise our voices in song and hymn. But even as we do so, we know that no words can ever describe your majesty and power portrayed in the high mountains that tower above us, nor express your generosity as we perceive in the wide expanse of the skies that cover the earth we live upon. We see the order you have created in the seasons that come and go. And as we snuggle up close to the warmth of your love in winter, we are assured that spring will bring forth new growth and life, and summer will yield a harvest of love until finally, in the autumn of our lives, we rest in the certain knowledge of your acceptance. For now we know that through Jesus Christ we have inherited the right to be called your children. And yet knowing this, we have all like sheep gone astray. We have failed and disappointed you when we have said and done things which have pierced your heart. We confess that we have too often neglected to pass on your love or reach out to the needy. We have not spoken up in support of those who have been wronged and we have been tardy in our service to you. We acknowledge with humility your grace and mercy in the forgiveness of our sins. Grant us, O Lord, the willingness and ache of love to change our lives so that we may grow in faith and love to forgive as we have been forgiven. We ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that our unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our They'll know we are Christians by our love. 
Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Our Old Testament reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 42. And I'm reading from verse 1 to 7. The Lord says, Here is my servant whom I strengthen, the one I have, have chosen, with whom I am pleased. I have filled him with my spirit, and he will bring justice to every nation. He will not shout or raise his voice or make loud speeches in the street. He will not break off a bent reed or put out a flickering lamp. He will bring the lasting justice to all. He will not lose hope or courage. He will establish justice on the earth. Distant lands eagerly await for his teaching. God created the heavens and stretched them out. He fashioned the earth and all that lives there. He gave life and breath to all his people. And now the Lord says to his servant, I, the Lord, have called you and given you power to see that justice is done on earth. Through you I will make a covenant with all peoples. Through you I will bring light to the nations. You will open the eyes of the blind and set free those who sit in dark prisons. Thus far, and now our New Testament reading is taken from Acts chapter 1, and this is Luke writing to Theopolis. In my first book I wrote about all the things that Jesus did and taught from the time he began his work until the day he was taken up to heaven. Before he was taken up, he gave instructions by the power of the Holy Spirit to the men he had chosen as his apostles. For forty days after his death, he appeared to them many times in ways that proved beyond doubt that he was alive. They saw him, and he talked with them about the kingdom of God. And when they came together, he gave them this order. Do not ju leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift I told you about the gift my father promised. John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit thus far. And now please pray with me as I come before the Lord. Lord, I stand before you just as I am, warts and all, and asking only that you would put your words in my mouth and that I may be a conduit for all that you are and all that you do. I ask this in your most holy name. Amen. Okay. How many of you woke up in excitement this morning thinking, Wow, it's Ascension Day. Mm, I don't think not one, not even myself. That's not surprising, because it's not Christmas or Easter, which are both so important that the whole Christian world has declared those events to be public holidays on which we commemorate the birth and crucifixion of our Lord and Saviour. But what about the Ascension? Why has it been sidelined? I think that's a question we need to ask the government. But for us who are able to be here this morning or in our homes, wherever we are listening to the sermon, today is Ascension Day. And I must say it's great to see so many of you here this morning because it is not a Sunday. And the powers that be have decided on our behalf that it is not important enough to be a public holiday. So then, may I ask you, is it good to be in the house of the Lord on this day of ascension? Good. I'm really happy. 
So I hope you are. Because you see, when I was young, and I must confess that seems to be a very, very long time ago, it was indeed considered to be a very important day on the Christian calendar. And most people I knew went to church to celebrate the event on this day. But why do true believers still believe it to be on a par with the Easter events, despite it being, according to some, to be just another date that follows after Easter, which happens to fall on a Thursday every year? Well, before I try to answer that question, let's affirm our belief that it is indeed a very special day by singing that wonderful old hymn written by Charles, Charles Wesley, Wesley, Christ the Lord is risen today.
So then, why do our traditional churches believe that Jesus' ascension is a very important event and not just an afterthought to the Easter events of Good Friday and Easter Sunday? To answer that question for myself, I delved into all four of the Gospel narratives, as well as the Book of Acts, where I found that each writer, even Luke, who wrote both the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts, recorded the events differently. The first thing I noticed is that Matthew and John don't mention the event at all. Secondly, Mark relates that Jesus ascended into heaven after he had spoken to the remaining 11 disciples as they were sharing a meal on Easter Sunday. Thirdly, Luke also writes that after Jesus had partaken of a piece of fish with them on Easter Sunday, he led them out to a place near Bethany where he blessed them, after which he ascended into heaven. And lastly, in the book of the Acts, which is in fact a continuation of his first gospel, Luke writes that Jesus appeared to his disciples at various times over 40 days. During this time, Jesus teaches them and tells them to wait for the Holy Spirit, who he will send to empower them to continue the work he began while he was with them on earth. The last time, while they were speaking, he was taken up to heaven and disappeared in a cloud right before their eyes. So there you have it. Three different stories from two different people. Perhaps it is no wonder that the skeptics roll their eyes in disbelief when a believer talks about the ascension. But folk, here is the important fact. That small word began in Acts chapter 1 verse 1 tells us that Christ's work did not end with his ascension but in fact marks the continuation of his ministry from heaven by the disciples through the empowerment. In his Pentecost message Peter explains this to the incredulous crowd who had gathered from all parts of the world to celebrate Pentecost, that is, the celebration of the first fruits of the harvest, and who had witnessed the amazing event of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon a group of about 120 followers of Jesus. In so doing, he converts the first 3,000 of the millions who down through the centuries started the movement that became known as the Christian faith. Today we as believers in the resurrected and ascended Lord Jesus, the Son of God, can take heart from the assurance that the ascended Christ is the unique mediator between God and humankind. His death and resurrection and ascension Secure our forgiveness, justification, and reconciliation with God. How so? Because the exalted Lord Jesus now sits beside our Heavenly Father, interceding for us as our true High Priest and Advocate. If He had not been resurrected and then ascended into Heaven, He would have been just another historical figure whose teachings would have died with him on the cross. So then, why is it still in this day and age such an important date on the Christian calendar? Well, most importantly for all believers, it means that Jesus is alive and actively engaged in our world and in our lives. And therefore, as his believing and willing servants, we will be empowered by the Holy Spirit to continue the ministry which he began here on earth. During his earthly ministry, Jesus' work was limited to one geographic region. 
But now, because of his ascension, he is everywhere and is able to hear and respond to our prayers, no matter where we are or what time it may be. He empathizes with our struggles, fears and heartache and takes delight in our joys because he himself experienced those human emotions while he was among us and we can be assured and take heart from the knowledge that he hears our prayers and will always respond with God's authority. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, what a privilege it is to be able to gather together as your family to remember and celebrate the ascension of your Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Thank you too for your word, which gives us the assurance that he lives and continues to live in the hearts of all who believe. Grant, we pray, that your Holy Spirit will continue to lead, guide, and inspire this church and all believers so that we, your people, may be emboldened to spread the good news of your gospel to all who seek and are in need of your prayers. Amen. And now, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forevermore. Amen.